Now that we have our scene set up and we've done some test renders to determine the required quality and the time that it takes to render at that quality, we're going to have a look at how to custom create surfaces and what's involved in that process. I'm going to go into Options, Element Attribute Surfaces, and I'm going to use this one here called Timber Oak Light as the basis, the one I'm going to copy and then edit. I would always recommend that we don't edit the original, but we create duplicates. So we're going to go New, Duplicate, Duplicate, and we'll call this Model Surface, just so it's a prefix which makes it easy to identify, and I'm using capital so it's easy to identify and I'll add in OSB, Orientated Strand Board. Now what do we do? Now we need to replace the texture. So we'll go to Texture, and we need to search for this new texture. So we'll go Search. Where are we finding this from? Currently this structure is based on Archicad's libraries. I would suggest that we want to I would suggest that we want to import a folder. I'll show you that in a minute, but for now I'll just show you where I'm going to find mine. So we have Archicad's Surface Catalog 22, and then we have this other folder here called Textures, and we see it's all in caps. I know that means it's mine. And I'm going to extend this, and this is looks very similar. I've spent a lot of time setting this up. So it's got subfolders. And the ones that we're going to have a look at today is this model texture range. And in this is a range of surfaces. We could extend this to make it a bit bigger if necessary. And I'm going to use this one in here that's called OSB. Press OK to choose it. We see that it will replace. Now I'll spend a little bit longer right now to go through these settings. When we're talking about the size, this is automatically said, well, let's bring it in at one meter by one meter. If I don't want to do that, particularly because we saw that the image I imported was vertically orientated, it wasn't square, it was taller than wide, it was 512 pixels wide and 1024 pixels tall. So what I want to do is actually keep the original proportion. So we see that's going to adjust. In some situations, that's not important. For some surfaces, we can alter the proportions and actually make it better. But for some, particularly things like bricks, we cannot do that. It's very dangerous to change the proportion of a brick because it's no longer representing to its true scale. Uh, we don't need to worry about scale so much here. It's more just about how it looks. But later on, I'll talk a lot more about how to get that scale to be perfect and, and why we need that scale to be perfect. I'm not going to play with any of these settings at the moment. Uh, the only one here that's interesting to trial is have a look at maybe if we're not just sampling it one by one, but if we're sampling it, say, four by four, what does it look like when it's repeated? Do we see a color variation or a light variation between? It's too zoomed out in order to be able to understand does it tile well, as in does it repeat well? I have made sure that this does repeat well. Uh, in another video, we'll have a look at what to do when it doesn't in Photoshop, how to edit it. But for now, that's fine. And I'm deliberately not going to change any of these settings here. I'm going to leave them just like they were with the surface that we started with. It's got a new name. We don't care about the vector or hatch, so we leave that as background just so it's empty. And we'll press OK. Now we're going to replace these walls with that particular material. So we'll go Options, Element Attributes, sorry, Wall Settings, click here, and then we need to find the model render, model surface. So it should all be alphabetical. We should be able to search it by going MOD, and if we remember what it's called, it should be easy to find that way. Model Surface OSB, OK automatically adjust. Let's do the same thing for the floor. Let's make another surface. Let's just use this one as a basis. New. 
duplicate. And we'll call this one cardboard. Okay. We could change the surface color if we wanted to to represent something a bit more muted. Doesn't really matter. And under texture, we will search for and find. this one here called white card okay now in this instance it's representing a piece of cardboard and I want it to be a lot bigger than a normal piece of cardboard so I'll keep the original proportions but then increase the size of this so it's covering the entire slab so we'll go 4000 and of course that won't cover the whole slab in the other direction, but this is just so we have enough texture that we can see it and understand it. Okay, I'm sort of deliberately doing something wrong if you've picked up. Okay. And then we'll apply that texture. So model surface cardboard to this. Now let's go to our fast settings, back to our fast, and render, and let's see what happens. Can you yet tell me what's going to happen? What went wrong? I didn't update the settings in the Cine Render Engine. We need to remember if we're using the basic engine to create our surfaces, we must we must update it. So let's close that and go back into the setting. In order to get back into each of these settings, we can Alt to pick up the set surface, Option, Ellen Attributes, Surface. And before I press OK, I need to go to my Cine Render, Match Settings, see how it's still the original timber? Update Cine Render Settings from Basic, OK, or I can do both. Cardboard, match settings, update Cine render settings from basic. OK, now let's do that again. Render, document, grave imaging, photo render projection. So now we see it's representing the materials the way that we want. Like save this, file save. We'll call this new surfaces. And we can then zoom in to understand the scale in which these are saving uh, and whether this texture is representing the way that we want it to.